from up here for x cubed is a times a times a. A squared is a times a. Write them out. Write them out. Let's just cross out the things that are exactly the same that are being multiplied together on the numerator and the denominator. So what crosses out on my problem here? Seven. Seven. Those are gone. The reason why they're gone is because we created one out of that. What else crosses out? Eight. Eight. How many? Four. Two. Two. Okay, four all together, but two sets. Yes. We'll write what's remaining. Don't forget. Don't lose anything. Don't forget anything. This is going to be equal to what? Seven. Seven. Eight. 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 Perfect. Perfect. I want to show you one thing. Maybe a little, not a shortcut really, but just an idea. Is there a way to get directly from here to here? Can you see that? I want you to look at the difference in those exponents. And look what we're doing. Just subtract the exponents. Look what we're really, yeah, look what we're really doing. This means you have three A's on the top, right? A times A times A. This means you have two A's on the bottom. We're taking away those two A's from those three A's, aren't we, by crossing them out. Can you go from here to here? What's three minus two? One. One. That's the exponent of one right there. One. Can you go from here to here? There's two on the top, three on the bottom. Three minus two, but it's going to stay on the bottom. That's one. You can actually do that. That's an exponent rule that you're going to find out in your math A or math C class, whatever you get. Okay, let's try one on your own. We'll talk about equivalent fractions for just a second and be done for our day today. Let's do 6x to the 4th over 60x to the 7th. Let's see if you got it. We only have a couple minutes left. We're going to talk about equivalent fractions too. So first thing I'm noticing, the 6 and the 60, those have a common factor already. What factor is that? 6. So I can write this as 6 times 1 over 6 times 10. Did you get that far as well? Yeah. Okay. Now the x's. This means x to the fourth, or x times x times x times x. Here we mean x times x times x times x times x times x times x. Do you see how if you have larger exponents than that, it's going to be kind of annoying to write that? Yeah. Yeah. The sixes are gone. Four sets of the x's are gone. And we're going to get, oh, what's on our numerator? One. Do we have anything? No. Is our answer 10x to the third, like that? Where was 10x to the third? Was it on the top of a fraction or the bottom of a fraction? Bottom. If you have something left on the bottom of a fraction, it better darn well be on the bottom of a fraction when you get done. You cannot just magically have this thing down here and all of a sudden it's like it's over one. Because this is like it's over one. Are you with me on that? You can't just have that. What's left on the top if you cross everything out? You got a one. That's your answer. One over 10x to the third. That's it. Okay. Now, could you get directly from here to here? Of course you could. 6 and 60, simplify that like you normally would. 1 10. 4, 7, 7 minus 4 is 3. The bigger number is on the bottom there, so we're taking 4 away from that 7, x to the third on the denominator. Now, equivalent fraction, I just want to show you one thing. Here's how you check whether two fractions are equal if you don't automatically know. You can either simplify both of them, which takes a long time, or if you cross multiply, if they're equal, the cross products or the cross multiplication will also be equal. For instance, 400 equals 400. You know those things are equal. Yes, those are equivalent. You cross multiply 16 times 25, 
40 times 10. If, they be, if they're the same on both sides, those fractions were equal. Compare that to this. Uh, I'm sorry, that's supposed to be 13. Four times 18, 13 times five. Uh, how much is four times 18? Or 13 times five, either one. 13 times five, 65. And this is, I think it's 72. Are those equal? No. Then these are not equivalent fractions. That's how you tell whether fractions are equivalent or not. You cross multiply if they're the same, equivalent fractions. If not, they're not. How many people understood today feel pretty good about what we talked about? Good, all right.